dynamic loading of plastics so far we have studied about stress strain curve or simple loading where we we load a, a specimen for example in tensile loading and we apply some stress and we measure strain so we can find out stress strain relationship something like this so this is a normal uh, stress strain behavior so here we apply stress but this application of stress is at a slower rate however in many application many um, practical application we will find that the load is not applied at a slower rate but it is in a dynamic means it is always changing and also it can be at a very faster rate so these two factors will be uh, known as dynamic loading of plastics in order to understand about the viscoelastic nature of polymers dynamic loading is an alternative to creep and stress relaxation test so creep test we are aware of in creep test we apply we apply a constant stress and we measure strain as a function of time so at time t0 we start with certain strain and this will change with with time okay. so this is called creep test so by conducting creep test basically we try to find out a viscoelastic nature of the polymer another test we are familiar with is called stress relaxation test where we give a fixed amount of strain and we measure stress as a function of time so we start as soon as we apply a strain we there will be a stress response and once we stop the strain at and continue to measure stress then we will see that stress immediately goes down but it continues to go down for a long time so it takes quite a long time before the stress can be fully recovered so this is called a stress relaxation so both creep and stress relaxation are conducted on polymers basically to find out viscoelastic behavior of polymers and the dynamic loading test is an alternative to creep and stress relaxation that means in dynamic loading also we will try to find out the viscoelastic nature of the polymer which will be useful for many applications now the viscoelastic nature or of polymers gives rise to many applications and this is why polymers or elastomers so when we call polymers it also includes elastomers such as rubber because they are all viscoelastic in nature so the application is as a damper for vibration control as we know that in many engineering application vibration is a big problem and many failure happen because of the vibration issue so by using a damper like this we can we can control vibration and therefore we can reduce the possibility of failure shock ab absorbing also is related to vibration but here when there is a sudden shock um, then we can we can control this by using uh, such kind of viscoelastic material soundproofing we use soundproofing um, that means we use this 
rubbery material or elastomeric material for proofing the sound for comfort this is a uh, application where we want human comfort so for example if we are using handle of a tool the handle of a tool it can be very uncomfortable if the ha handle is very very hard material if made of hard material but if we cover the handle with a soft material so for example a tool such as just a hammer and we have got this handle but if we <coughs> cover this handle with a rubbery material then the comfort level is increased and this is also because of the viscoelastic nature because the viscoelastic nature will give rise to absorbing the vibration or the shock and therefore it is comfortable to the human hand so these are all um, applications there are many other applications for example in railway we can use in earthquake uh, application we can use so there are many applications where um, the damping property of viscoelastic materials is used dynamic loading tests so using this concept of dynamic loading there is a uh, something called dynamic loading test can be used to characterize a polymer for its physical state or properties so many physical state or physical properties for example um, level of curing in a thermo set material or any other physical property density and and so on can be determined using dynamic loading testing that means we can understand about the material properties using dynamic loading testing so this also we will study in this uh, in this part now i will conduct a very simple experiment to illustrate the phenomenon of damping this i will perform by dropping a golf ball on three kinds of surfaces a hard granite surface, a soft computer mouse pad, and then on silly putty. We will observe how the ball bounces after hitting the surface from a fixed height. The height of rebounds tells us the amount of energy that is stored in the ball as elastic energy and the amount of energy that is lost due to viscous loss, sound, heat, etc. I am dropping this cold ball from a height of 40 cm onto a granite surface. Since the granite surface is hard, the gold ball rebounces back to about 35 cm height. This represents the elastic energy that was stored in the gold ball as it touched the granite surface and deformed elastically. The ball is also quite hard and hence there, there was little loss of energy. But nevertheless, the ball could not regain the complete height of 40 cm. The loss in height is the energy loss, part of which is due to the viscous loss in the material of the ball, assuming that the granite has no viscous effect at all. Now I am putting a computer mouse pad which is soft and then dropping the same ball from the same height of 40 cm. This time the ball has rebounced back to a height of only 19 cm. This shows that the loss of energy is more in this case. This loss is because of the viscous effect in the material of the pad which is made of soft polymer foam. This is the damping effect of a polymer. Now I have another material which is known as silipati. This is also a polymer which is almost in the viscous state something like a chewing gum. I will flatten the silipati here and then conduct the same experiment. When I drop the ball from the same height, ball bounces back to a height of about 25 cm, which is higher than in the case of polymer foam. Even though silipati feels much softer, it has another property which is known as strain rate dependence. 
all viscoelastic materials have this property, but the extent varies from one material to another. The gold ball is able to rebound higher because when the ball hits silipati, the polymer of silipati behaves as a stiffer material. This means that the material of the foam did not stiffen to the same extent as silipati even though the ball hit the surface with the same force and speed. In these experiments, we have learned that polymers show different losses and different strain rate dependence depending upon the way the molecules of the polymer behave. We will utilize these concepts in the analysis for dynamic loading of polymers or plastics. Now in most of the uh, stress strain uh, application we have conducted so far, we find that the stress is applied rather slowly. But in the case of dynamic loading, the stress will be applied at a much faster rate and also it will be a regular or periodic manner. That means the stress will change um, in a periodic manner and this is this has been shown here. So let's say the stress is changing with time. So here we have got uh, omega t, omega is the angular speed and t is the time. So with time stress is changing from certain value to a maximum value then again it goes down going up to zero and again it goes back in the reverse direction that is means here it is minus and again it comes back to zero and continues so this is called cyclic loading or periodic loading where the stress is continuously changing in a particular fashion if the stress is changing so we know for any material if we are applying stress there will be a strain so the strain will also change in the same manner as we are applying the stress so strain is also following the same similar kind of periodic or cyclic manner so it is going from a smaller value to maximum value going to zero going in the reverse direction negative strain and then again going so this will follow this will go on and on and depending upon the the angular speed their response will will change but now here we can see that when the stress is maximum maximum value the strain is not max the strain is this one strain is actually less than maximum the maximum value of a strain comes at a later time so there is a time lag between the stress and strain so the strain is not following exactly the way the stress is following in a normal Hookean solid for example we have understood for let's say a spring if there is a spring and we apply force so as soon as we apply force there will be a displacement there will be no time lag so here in this case it is purely elastic response so there is no time lag but here in this case we see that there is a time lag and this time lag is seen as a phase difference so for example here it has been shown as a phase difference and delta is the phase difference so this is the response of a polymeric material or elastomeric material where the stress and strain are not in phase with each other and the reason for this is basically the viscoelastic nature we have understood the model of viscoelastic models models so we have studied about this so for example um, one model uh, Maxwell model gives the viscoelastic nature in spring and a dashboard so they are arranged in series 
So in this case, this is the purely elastic response. And this one is purely viscous. So a combination of elastic and viscous response gives us the viscoelastic behavior. So here we see that the purely elastic behavior, there will be no time lag because there is no time dependence here. Whereas in the viscous response, there will be time lag because it is a viscous material and viscous material we know is uh, time dependent. And this one is instantaneous. No time dependence. Here is time dependence. So a viscoelastic response is a combination of these two, either in series or it can be in parallel, but always there is a combination of these two effects. And there, therefore, what we see here, the time response or time lag, is because of the viscous part of this material. So this kind of response we will see only in polymeric material or elastomeric material. Purely uh, elastic material, for example, most of the metals at normal temperature or ceramics, they will not show you this kind of behavior. So this is what gives rise to the viscoelastic nature. This viscoelastic nature gives rise to, as we have um, discussed, gives rise to damping because damping is basically a delayed response of strain with respect to the stress. And this kind of changing stress and changing strain can also give rise to what is called fatigue, fatigue fracture. So fatigue fracture is also related to this kind of dynamic loading. And also we have mentioned about dynamic testing which is called dynamic mechanical testing. So DMT has been developed based on this one. So using this response of the material that is stress and strain response with a lag here, phase lag, uh, we can find out the, the elastic property and how the elastic property will change with different physical nature of the polymer. So just now we have uh, learned about dynamic loading of, in which we mentioned that the stress follows a cyclic manner. This is also known as sinusoidal curve. So So we can represent the stress by an equation which follows this curve with the maximum amplitude. So if we represent this stress profile by an equation, we can write the equation in this fashion, where sigma is equal to sigma naught sine omega t. Uh, this equation will exactly follow this curve. So this is how the stress is being applied. But in response to this stress application, the strain will not follow exactly the same manner, but there will be a lag of lag as we have understood. So here in this equation, omega is the angular velocity of the stress vector, and uh, omega can also be given as 2 pi f, where f is the frequency, cyclic frequency in Hertz, and which can also be then given as 2 pi over t, capital T, where t is the period of sinusoidal oscillation. Now for purely elastic response of the associated strain, so if the material is purely elastic in nature, purely elastic res response, then we can write the strain equation by this. Here you can see that um, there is no phase change. The strain is exactly following the stress because the material is purely elastic. There is no viscous component, there is no time dependence. 
but for polymers and elastomers there is time effect so this time effect is shown so for viscoelastic material strain will lag behind the application of stress due to viscous flow which is time dependent so strain for viscoelastic response will be given by this phase difference this phase lag that means the strain is not following exactly the way the stress is following it is lagging behind by delta so this these are the two equations which we can use for stress and strain. So if a stress is moving in this way, the strain will move this way. So by if lagging by a phase difference. So same thing is actually represented, written in this fashion, where the stress is written as going ahead by delta and strain is following omega t so this is also the same representation as this one so this is a more proper way of writing the equation for stress and strain in the case of dynamic loading so stress is written by this way and in response the strain is given by this so this uh, set of equations are more popular in the case of viscoelastic behavior um, dynamic response of scholastic behavior of polymers now this the equation for stress can be expanded in this this way so just now we wrote sigma is equal to sigma naught sine omega t plus delta so this can be expanded in this format so here basically we can see the stress is a combination of two components. So the above equation indicates that the stress has two components. The first component is sigma naught cos delta, this one, which is in phase with the strain because this is omega t. The second part sigma naught sine delta, this one which is 90 degree out of phase with the strain because it is cos. So the stress can be separated into two parts. One is in phase with the strain and another part is out of phase by 90 degree. So now based on the above analysis two dynamic moduli E1 and E2 can be proposed for viscoelastic polymers or viscoelastic materials that means the material has got two types of moduli normally we associate one uh, single modulus for any material we which we write as e but here we have to, we will define two moduli one will be defined as this one sigma naught cos delta over epsilon 1 this is in phase with the strain so which is comes from here so sigma naught cos delta is the, the maximum value divided by the strain, maximum value of the strain. So this is one modulus. Another modulus is de defined from here, sigma naught sine delta over epsilon naught. So this modulus is 90 degree out of phase with the strain. So this modulus is in phase with the strain. This modulus is 90 degree out of the phase. So above equation, equation, this equation can be now written in this form where sigma is equal to epsilon naught E1 which is this one sine omega t plus epsilon naught E2 which is this one cos omega t. So this kind of representation can be shown by a phasor diagram
this is called a phase diagram where we represent E1 and E2 with the delta as the phase difference and this is can be written in this form where E star is the comp composite modulus or complex modulus so complex modulus is a new term we have defined which is a combination of E1 and E2 E1 is in phase with the strain and E2 is out of phase by 90 dB so this thing can also be represented by this formula where E1 plus I E2 so this is a complex equation and this is a complex number I which is given as under root minus 1 E1 and E2 can be calculated by measuring the stress and strain amplitudes and the phase like delta in a dynamic loading test. Now we have just now we have defined E1 which is in phase something which is in phase with strain the stress which is in phase with the strain that means this indicates the elastic purely elastic part and that's why this is called storage modulus or also known as real modulus storage mo modulus because this is the part where the energy the elastic energy is completely stored so this is known as storage modulus e2 which is the imaginary modulus component in the previous equation we saw this one this is the e2 so e2 is related to the the loss because out of phase by 90 degree so this is called loss modulus basically that's the energy loss so each polymer or any viscoelastic material will have two types of moduli modulus uh, one is e1 which is the real modulus or the storage modulus and another is e2 which is the imaginary modulus or the loss modulus so this is more popular name the storage modulus and the loss modulus so just now we have learned about the two moduli e1 and e2 so for any viscoelastic material we will will be represented by e1 and e2 e1 is known as storage modulus which is responsible for the purely elastic nature of the material and e2 is the loss modulus which is related to the energy loss which is basically because of the viscous nature or viscous viscous loss and using the phase diagram we can also say tan delta is e2 over e1 now for any polymer we can conduct a, a test uh, the dynamic loading test where we can measure e2 e1 and the delta so when we plot e1 and e2 and tan delta as a function of the log of the angular velocity then we can get this kind of trends so here the dotted line represents the storage modulus or e1 so here we will see that for low frequency or for low um, angular speed when the dynamic loading is um, is being applied at a lower frequency then we can see that the E1 value of E1 is very very low as the frequency increases the value of E1 will continue to increase and at very high 
value of um, log omega or at very high frequency the value of E1 will attain a maximum value. This is for E1 or the storage modulus. So it will achieve a maximum value. So that means the elastic behavior is maximum here. Now if you look at the loss modulus or E2, loss modulus changes from a very low value at lower frequency to maximum at a medium frequency and then the loss modulus again drops down at very high frequency. The loss modulus is maximum when the storage modulus is increasing at the fastest rate. So when the storage modulus is increasing we see the loss modulus has got the maximum value and it will go down as we increase the frequency. So what it shows is that the viscous response of the material is very high at the intermediate frequency. When the frequency of the stress is extremely high then the viscous response goes down and the material basically behaves like more like elastic than viscous. Similarly at very low frequency again the loss modulus is very low and the the storage modulus value is also very low. The loss tangent or tan delta also follows um, the minimum to maximum and then again minimum but at a different frequency. So the loss tangent will also show similar kind of trend but at a lower frequency. So now from this um, graph we can say that the storage modulus is zero at low frequency and increases rapidly to a high value as the frequency is increased. The loss modulus is zero at low and high frequencies and shows a maximum at the frequency where the storage modulus is increasing most rapidly. So this is the typical um, dynamic mechanical testing DMT result. So whenever we conduct DMT tests, we will receive this kind of data for the given polymer where we have got E1, E2 and tan delta. And each E1 and E2 defines the, the mechanical property of the material, the storage modulus and the loss modulus. A polymer is a viscoelastic material and hence can be studied by the creep test, the stress relaxation test or the dynamic loading test in addition to the normal short term stress strain test. In the dynamic loading test of a polymer where the stress follows a cyclic or a periodic profile, the strain will also follow similar profile but there will be a time lag or a phase difference between the application of the stress and the production of strain in the material. This is a typical behavior of a viscoelastic material such as a polymer or an elastomer. The phase difference between the stress and the strain is a result of the viscous nature of polymers which exist in addition to the purely elastic behavior. Therefore, a polymer is characterized by two moduli, the storage modulus and the loss modulus. A dynamic mechanical test or DMT can be used to find out the two moduli and the phase difference delta for a polymer.